You said that stabbings usually happen when the shifts are changing. Yeah, at Sentinella State Prison, it was like clockwork, Charlie Yard, level four GP, general population, shift changing. And I, and I kind of appreciate that because they usually like let us go home. We don't have to stay and do paperwork. Right, and you said that the COs really aren't interested in making arrests over violent crimes. So when they see a stabbing or a beating, a lot of times they'll just let it go? More so now because of the way the administration has punished officers for doing their job per policy. You know, they're trying to push a certain agenda. So back then, yeah, you can possibly see people get beat up and stabbed and possibly look the other way. Okay, have you done that yourself? The thing is, is that eventually we do have to render aid. We do eventually we will have to get involved. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Okay, so... Are we, are we quick to stop the violence? To, to give you an honest answer? No. So you let guys fight? Sometimes. I'll give you an example. There's been times where two Sureños were drunk and came up to me or the shot caller and said, hey man, these two guys have an issue. Can they handle it on the other side of the bunk? Hey man, right? And then they go and they handle it. Oh, okay. Um... But that was back. I mean, yeah. Does that happen? Yes. I'm not going to lie. Well, yeah. And you said the CEOs start to adopt the same mentality as some of the prisoners. Uh, you know, fear, violence, intimidation. You have to adopt that or you'll be eaten alive. And nobody exempt from prison rules, especially not the CEOs. So explain to me how the CEOs become part of the, the gang mentality. So I've been away from the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation for about one year and 10 months now. Come short of two years. And I have a bigger uh, perspective of exactly how that is, is that since we as peace officers cannot impose violent acts and stab a coworker or beat up a coworker, right? Because that'll get us fired or, or, or arrested. They use other tactics such as uh, rumors, gossip, character assassination, backstabbing. And that's how they adopt the mentality of the inmates because it's political... Uh, it's all political. It's all fear, ba fear driven. Um, we we talked about no ratting earlier. We talked about no ratting. It's very clickish. It's definitely very clickish as as inmates would be. And um, overall, I can honestly say that whole prison system breeds breeds negativity, breeds negativity. Well, yeah, you said that one of your partners actually got assaulted, ended up getting a broken neck, needed titanium plates drilled into a spine. Yep. Did he go back to work after that? He went back to work after that incident, and then he eventually, that guy kind of went off the deep end. I mean, a lot of people go off the deep end sometimes, and he would eventually just either he quit or he got fired. I think he got fired. Um, I mean, you yourself, what was the most violent situation that you got into on the job? Where I was involved? Yeah. Oh, man. Have you been assaulted yourself? I had never been assaulted in 16 years. But that's not to say that I, that I couldn't have. That's sheer luck, right? And like my dad told me one time, I said, uh, hey, dad, uh, if I get assaulted, and he said, when? When you get assaulted? I said, don't you mean if? He goes, when? And that's the mentality that these young correctional officers need to have. Uh, I was a brand new sergeant in February of 2015 at Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility because I promoted to another prison. And the uh, inmate tied a knife to his hand. He used his bed sheets and wove the, uh, the shank to his hand so he couldn't drop it. And he stabbed the correctional officer sitting at the podium. And I heard the alarm go off in housing unit 17. And it was 8 o'clock at night, I want to say on a Sunday. And I wasn't doing anything, so I, I, I sprinted to the building. And as soon as I get there, I see, I see an inmate in the prone position with officers doggy, pile him, doggy piling him near the officer's podium area. So I'm like, I'm thinking, is there a fight between two inmates? Where's the other inmate, right? Because I'm thinking fast and the alarm is blaring. It's like, Arr. So I had already had my baton drawn because that's how we were taught in Sentinella. When you come into a housing unit, you come out with your baton ready in case the inmates are hiding on the sides of the rotunda and ambush you because that did happen. That does happen. So when I, I run in, the officer said, hey, he stabbed me, Sarge. He has a weapon. And I like looked at his hand 
and yeah, I could see the knife and I just came down and I broke, I broke his forearm. I can't remember whether it was left or his right. And when I, when I hit him with my baton, the officer yelled, he has it tied to his hand. And then I looked and yeah, dude, that dude had it uh, tied to his hand. So I immediately began to stomp, stomp the guy's hand. By then responding staff were coming. And I don't know if I mentioned that that inmate had been high on meth for five days. So this dude was, was, was amped up and not feeling pain. I mean, I had just broke his arm. He had just got hit in the head with a baton. You know, we used deadly force because that was a deadly force situation and he was still fighting. And dude, like, I was a sergeant. I was brand new. I stomped that dude out. And uh, I scared one of the female officers because she's like, I never seen you like that before. And um, I had to, we stayed late, wrote reports, you know, I was a supervisor. And I got home, took a shower, and I could just feel my adrenaline in the shower. You know, and at the time, my wife, because as a, as, a, as, a, as a CO, as a correctional officer, you don't go home and you don't tell your, your family what, what just happened. And I just said, you know, some, something happened. It got busy. It was real busy. It, got, it was real bad. It got late. And um, luckily that the officer, he was wearing a vest. It hit the vest. The, the knife hit the vest, and it also hit him in the bicep. Um, but that was, that was a, a, a crazy situation for me.